If you've noticed, some of you recognize this precious place from which I am about to guide your practice for the first time in a long time, a CC Yoga studio. I'm just so moved to be here and to be able to share practice with you from this most sacred place. I will begin today with an invocation to Patanjali, the author of the Yoga Sutras. And as I do this, you are more than welcome to just lie down if you like, or just sit in a way that's comfortable so that your knees are not higher than your hips and use a second blanket. Or maybe if you just have one blanket, then use it for sitting, yeah? And some other things that we'll do. So just tune in to your breath, to your rhythm, to where you are, and receive the chant. Yogena chitasya palena vajram, malam sharigasya javadya kena, yopa karutam pravaram muminam, patam jalin pranjali Allahu Purusha Karam Jankachakra Sidariram Jahasra Shreyasam Shreyam Pranamani Patanjali Hari Om. So our aim for today is to free up our hips as well as in BKS Iyengar's words, to squeeze and soak our organs. So we will be twisting as well. We'll begin on the floor. So have that one extra blanket handy, as well as your strap for if and when needed. Keep your legs bent at first. Come down into your forearms. And then from here, flick your tail under a little bit just to release the lumbar spine, maybe even move a little side to side. And then go ahead and bring yourselves down, but keep the head up. Take your hands in this fashion to the base of your skull. Okay, so the thumbs are moving towards the, the neck and the, and the eight fingers are really supporting that neck like, a hand, like the head, like a hammock so that the neck can release. And then from here, take a nice deep breath in as you reach down towards the ground. And then on the next out breath, round the spine and draw that left knee towards your chest, bringing both elbows in that direction as well. Amping out the breath, really drawing in. Amping, amping, amping. Being aware of the whole back body. And then inhaling back. And let's do the same thing on the second side. Exhaling this way. Rounding, rounding, amping out the breath. And then inhaling back again. So you're welcome to repeat one side at a time, just as we did. Or you're welcome to bring both legs together for two more, round, for two more rounds. So amping out the breath, rounding, rounding, rounding. And then inhaling back. And once more, just activating the center of the body. Yeah, waking things up there. Those of you who study Ayurveda know how important Agni is. So this is kindling the Agni. In fact, all the work we'll be doing today is related to that. And then go ahead and settle down. Release your head, but keep the neck nice and long. And then from here, let's draw the left knee into the chest. Take your hands in this fashion with the fingers to the center of the hamstrings, the back of the leg, and then just kind of open it up and do a little massage in this way to the back of the leg. It's like a nice way, actually very effective way to tell those muscles that you're about to work with them, that you're about to open them up. And they cooperate in that way. Yeah, they like to be massaged first, as I have discovered, all the way to one end of the attachment of those muscles, 
all the way up to the other leg. And then after that, go ahead and straighten that left leg. The foot is flexed, the thigh is engaged. Now, if you have the leg at a 90 degree angle, you can afford to take that bottom, that right leg all the way down, keeping that thigh down as well, of course. If not, if the leg is about here, you may feel a lot more uh, access to what we're going to do with the leg bent. Okay, so measure, so gauge it, gauge it by that. Now from here, whether you're here or here, you want to begin to rotate your toes out. So you are lengthening from the inner groin to the inner heel, but you're also engaging from the outer hip to the outer heel. This will be a theme along our practice, yeah? So then go ahead and bend the leg from here. And then take your strap. I'm not going to use the loop. I would normally, but I'm not going to use the loop since some of you may not have a loop, and I just think it would be easier for you to see it this way. So just take that strap around your foot in this fashion. See that? Or you would loop it around that way. And then from here, begin to straighten that leg with the toes still pointing out. The bottom leg is either straight or bent. And now as you encourage the inner groin to lengthen to the inner heel, you are working that outer hip. Really working that. Okay, so keep that alive. Keep that strong as you open. You're in no hurry to go to the floor. In fact, you're not even going to go to the floor. What you're interested in is welcoming more space in your hip area by engaging the outer hip to support the opening of the inner groin. That's the dance, yeah? So engage in the outer hip to support the opening of the inner groin. And then go ahead and bring it back. Surely you can do this much longer and repeat several times. So on your own, keep that in mind. Bend the leg, release the strap. Now go ahead and take that left leg all the way down. And just notice from that little minute of activity, of engagement and release. But that leg is slightly different than the other. Yeah? Imagine if you really spent some time. It would be wonderful. So then bend both legs. Draw the right knee into the chest. And then again, we're going to bifurcate those, those um, hamstring muscles starting at the back of the knee. Just massaging. So this is all I'm doing. Yeah, just massaging the muscle. Maybe it's a knuckle. I know that's not there for you. Uh, with the fingers, perhaps, yeah? Especially if you have long nails. All the way to the base, all the way to your sit bone. Do it a couple times. At home, longer. Maybe doing Abhyanga. Do it with Abhyanga. And then from here, straighten out that top leg. And now, if that leg is in a 90 degree angle, the leg is straight, of course, and the, and, and the thigh muscle is really engaged, then go ahead and straighten out that bottom leg. All right? Otherwise, if you're here, then keep that leg bent. You'll be happier. You have more stability to the core. So then from this, we begin to rotate the toes out. And as we do, we encourage that inner groin to lengthen and the outer glutes to engage. So now you can bend the leg. You can take this, oh yeah, I didn't show you the option where you don't need the strap at all. So if your finger, if your hand can touch the big toe, then there you are, right? You don't need the strap. But that may take a while, as it did for me, it took a long time. But it's all worth it, so worth it. So then here, again, you take the strap in this way, this is all right too. It's often, it's actually more often done in this way, but I prefer to, to be here with that. As I turn, this feels more accessible. Yeah. So then the same story. If your bottom leg is straight, it's really engaged. The top of the thigh is moving towards the knee. Bottom, the, the leg that is up, also the top of the thigh moving towards the knee. So you are engaging that outer glute on your right leg so that you can open the inner groin. And you find that you forget outer glute. Okay, here you are. 
But this is what keeps you safe, so you cannot forget it for very long and stay in the practice. So, asana, right, this physical aspect of yoga, just like any aspect of yoga, requires our absolute complete presence. Absolute complete presence. And that is the icing on the cake of the practice, right? Engage that outer group as you open through the inner groin. Engage that outer group as you open through the inner groin. And so the story continues. Not in a hurry to get anywhere because there's no way where to go. There's just body give me permission to open up more. And so you engage just to the, a bit to the degree that you can and you realize that the body opens more. All right, and then from here, you draw it back. Once more, take that leg all the way down. Just notice the effects. Should feel pretty wonderful. Again, repeating this is definitely recommended before moving on. But for the sake of our time together, we move on. So this time, we're going to take the legs, the feet, uh, the legs in a 90 degree angle like so. And we're really gonna squeeze those legs together. Now, if you have that extra blanket handy or a block, then you can place it between the heels and the knees and really squeeze that blanket. If you have a block, then you put it between your thighs, yeah? Otherwise up there, it will, it will hurt. Between your thighs is a block or between knees and, and um, shins as a blanket. And then from here, again, engaging, lengthening the spine, activating those outer glutes, Take your arms out to the side, the palms down, you find that should be a little bit more stabilizing, the shoulders are down. And now draw both knees towards the left hand. As you, am, as you empty out the breath, you find that the waistline on the right side wants to come up, and it will, but do your best to encourage it to move down. That's where the twist comes in. And then you inhale your way back, both legs together. And you repeat on the second side, exhaling. Notice that the waistline wants to come for the party, but just encourage it to move back so the abdomen is moving in the opposite direction. You are looking the opposite way, yes. But even more interesting than that is that the shoulder, the opposite shoulder really stays plugged in. The waistline really stays plugged in. And then inhaling back with the legs together, drawing in. Let's do this again. Yes. Tarpariva Tanasana. Wonderful. Shukindo Agni. To, to say to that heat of transformation. Yes, ignite in me. Now, some of you will want to take it to the next level where the legs are straight, and some of you will be very happy right where you are. Either way, the legs must be together. Yes, so if you find that the legs are separating with them straight, then come back to bent knees. Or just rest for a moment. Reconnect. So the feet are moving towards the hands, yes? Yeah? So this is not a 90 degree angle. It's much higher than that. It's a 45 degree angle to your upper torso. And the abdomen is moving in the opposite direction of the legs. So watch how that waistline wants to come up. Keep drawing it back down. Abdomen moves to the opposite side of the legs. And let's just complete the second cycle. Although surely you could do this much longer, you could do this every day, it would be so wonderful for you, yeah? And then inhaling back. And then getting rid of that prop, if you have a prop there or a block, bending the legs, bringing them to the ground, and just noticing the effects of what you just did. Now we're gonna roll onto the side. and bring ourselves up. 
I'm going to give you guys a side view for a moment. We're going to sit in Upa Vista Konasana. Or we're going to eventually explore that pose. Now, it's important that that arch of the spine be there. That you're not rounding up. So you want props because we're going to be um, in this for a while. So one nice way you should take a Tadasana blanket, fold it up like so, and then sit on it long ways. And the reason why I say long ways is because we're going to be exploring Janushashasana as well, so we're going to be bending the leg, and we want to make sure that the knee goes down, it's not up high. So if you have the prop in this way instead, then you can't really quite lower the knee. Yeah. So. The prop is long ways, like so, and you are here. Okay? So I will be facing you now. The blanket gets a little bit funny, it's all right. So as you sit up tall in this pose, it's the same story of what we've been doing so far. You want to take the thigh muscles down into the ground. And you want to extend out through the legs at the same time. So here. Yeah? With a long, long spine. So surely you may need to fold that blanket up more. You might want to take it much higher. Use a bolster, use a block, and then a blanket on top. Whatever you need to maintain that long spine. That's really important. Let's take the strap around the left foot, leave it there. Let's take the right hand to the outside of that right knee, and let's take the ankle right into the inner groin with the sole of the foot facing up. Now, if this is not making your knee happy, then maybe again, coming up higher on a prop may do the work, may do the job for you, or maybe you're just gonna have to leave that leg straight and still work the principles, yeah? The key with Janushashasana is that that bent leg really aims down, that that knee is pointing down, that from the inner groin to the knee, you're pressing down. And so the outer glute really can play a big role, and as you engage it, it will give you more stability. From here, take straddle your hands to either side of that straight leg, because we're going to fold over that straight leg, broadening through the collarbones, from the abdomen, rising up and then exhaling, folding over that leg. Now notice that you're folding over that leg, so the outer ribs of the bent leg, you really want to encourage them to draw in. The, uh, the ribs of the straight leg, you really want to encourage them to move back. So if it's there for you, you grab either side of the foot and continue to lengthen from the abdomen and fold over that leg. Or, you take the strap and work in that direction. So it's really about working in the direction while maintaining the integrity of the pose. That's really all that you're after. So inner thigh of that back of that bent leg, really working out, inner group working, and then going from here, encouraging the ribs to move forward, the outer ribs to move back, and creating the degree that you're So drawing the knee up, extending that leg out, drawing the left knee up, take that heel to the inner groin of that same leg, so you're not here, if you're able, and the, and the foot facing up, same story as before, giving yourself the height that is needed, taking the strap in case you lose it on the other side, and then here again, just bring both hands to either side and lift, rise. So begin the rotation from the base of the spine. Engage in that thigh. Taking a nice deep breath in. And then folding over that right leg. Without straining, there's no hurry. The ribs of that bent leg move forward. Continue to work that back leg. The ribs of the straight leg move back. And then again, you either grab a hold of the foot or the strap in this fashion. And you only go as low as you can maintain that length, that you can continue to create that length 
So we can fold over that leg. So it's, it's a work in progress. You just have to be mindful of the process, right? Or be appreciative of the process wherever we are. So that was Janu Shushasana. Now we're going to do Pabrita Janu Shushasana. So now we're going to revolve that pose. So bending that front knee, that right knee again. And this time we're going to face that right leg. And as we do, lengthen, lift, rise. And while we continue to face that leg, continue to rotate in that way, we're going to take the arm of the straight leg and just pause it here and find some length to begin to move laterally. So maybe that top of the, the top arm of the bent leg can come by the ear. Yeah. And then with each breath, you may find that you can go a little bit deeper without compressing that lower portion, keeping it nice and long. And then maybe the forearm comes down. And maybe the palm opens. And if the palm opens, you can grab a hold of that inside of the foot. And maybe you can just enjoy this here. If you feel that you can go a little further, but you can't quite clasp the outside of the leg for the full pose and turn your chest all the way up, as BKS Iyengar is does a beautiful image I saw of him recently doing that. So the whole chest should be looking up because you're rotating, yeah? So if that's not the case, surely isn't the case for me. I find the belt to be very helpful because then I can continue to encourage that length on that bottom side as I open here. Not getting caught up in what you see, right? If it's not where you are, just considering what's happening here and that here is everything you need. So then coming back and then drawing that knee up, extending it back out. And then second leg, second side, drawing in, bring that heel in towards you. And this time you can lift the strap on that side. So again, just creating length, encouraging those thighs to move down, especially the bent leg, and then taking the arm inside, creating length, opening up, bicep by the ear, and just breathe with this, finding space here, opening up here, and then maybe this will come someday. Yeah? The neck is an extension of the spine, so keep it nicely tall. And maybe the palm opens and grabs a hold of the inside of the foot. And maybe you can catch the outside of the foot or use the strap. And again, aiming at the chest rising up. If you have been practicing for a while and you're there. Or enjoying each breath. All right. Both legs out again. Let's take those arms up. And as you bring the arms up, lift from the waistline. Root down through the thighs. And now here, we're going to put all of this together in a way. We're going to extend through the inner groins to the outer heels while also rooting down through the outer glutes, while also creating that space from the base of the spine up as we lift. Eventually, the hands come to the toes, and your whole spine is long on the ground, yeah? Eventually, but that's really, what's really required here is that those outer glutes continue to root in order for this to be safe to open. That's really important. Keep going, just playing with it. What you'll find is that as you go forward, at least that's the case for me, 
as I go forward, this caves in, right? But then I lose the support that will allow me to open. So it should continue to work those other things. One breath at a time, kindly and lovingly, discovering space in the body. It's a wonderful feeling. It's not to be a strain or effort. And then from here, draw your feet in like so for a moment. And those of you who can go into restorative with us, we're going to pick up right from where we left off. And those of you who cannot, and at least do five good minutes or so of Shavasana, just lying in corpse pose, will be a nice um, antidote to all the forward folding and twisting that we just did. 